been almost 30 years since the release of this song. Oh, 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 I wanna get close to you. Well, since then, Peter's <laughs> gone on to achieve multiple number ones, branched out into film, stage and beyond, and is now on tour to mark his three decades in showbiz. Here he is to tell us more. Please welcome Peter Andre. <laughs> Me a fortune. Why? Because I had to buy the perfume you were wearing. Oh. You just had oh, to make yeah. it. Oh, nice. He always smells lovely. We're talking about getting back engagement rings after shows. Someone yes, can make so a what? killing so what out of this. Well, personally, mm. I think you should start up a business of just getting engaged. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. No. I... Have you ever had a ring thrown at you? <laughs> Have you? So naughty. Have you though? No. I haven't. Have you ever thrown a ring? Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> you are so rude. No, no, I... You know, do, oh. you're, do you know you're alone in that? Yeah, you're on your own on you're that. You're the only one no, rings. I, I've never had that done. <laughs> and I do think that once you've given it, it's a gift. That's it. See? But, but... But here's another thing. All right, go on. Mm. Why don't you just buy a cheap engagement ring and give yeah. the real one Fake. when you get married. That is a good point. Fake ah. one. But then again, um, you are Rupert Murdoch. Two millions, like, probably... Nothing. Yeah. You know. Or, or Peter Andre. <laughs> <laughs> Can't afford a two million. <laughs> no, no, it's a gift. You've given it. Tough luck. Um, but who called it off? She, she did. Oh, she's smart. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. She's a smart, smart Allegedly. Woman. We don't know. We don't know. Okay. Well, look, it's an absolute pleasure, as it always is, to have you on the show. Thanks. And what's incredible is your song, Mysterious Girl, Girl, is one of the songs that's guaranteed to get an absolute crowd of people like this lot Every time. really, really excited. Every, time. Every oh, single time. Thank did you. you know it was a classic when you did it? Well, it's really funny, because we were in the studio and I was writing it with a guy called Ollie J. And Ollie, we, I was saying, what can we do to these chords because they're, they're chords that you can sing loads of songs over. And um, and then he said, look, I've got this idea of Mystery Man. It was called Mystery Man at first. Oh, okay. And it was it was kind of the Shubba Ranks kind of thing where the girl sings, oh, Mystery Man, I want to get close okay. to you, and then I'm supposed to reply. And I said, I'm from Australia, I can't rap, it's not going to work. Not saying Aussies can't rap, by the way, but I'm saying <laughs> me being from Australia, it couldn't work. And so I said, why don't we flip it? And then we changed it to Mysterious Girl. And as soon as we did it, I knew straight away this was going to be a hit. Did you? Did Problem you? is, after that, that's never happened again, but that's not the point. <laughs> we have had a couple of hits since. We have had a couple of number yeah, ones, yeah. but I never felt the same about those. I never knew instinctively yeah. it was going to be Isn't it funny what makes some songs just yeah. sort of stand the test of time? It reminds me of that. summer. It feels like song. yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah. It really it does. feel like yesterday. 30 years, Peter. It's mad, isn't it? Woo! You know? 30 years. <laughs> it's so mad. Have you enjoyed the roller coaster, the 30 year roller coaster? Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when people say to you things like, oh, you know, would you ever take anything back? Or I said, if I, and I know some people think this, if you could go back to when it all began, but with the knowledge you've got now, yeah. I mean, wouldn't that be. Youth unreal? is wasted on the young, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, because you, you kind of, a lot of times you think you know everything. I mean, I went through that stage where I thought, no, 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 I should do this, I should do that. And I didn't listen as much as I should have. Yeah. And, and I quite possibly could have had. Instead of two more number ones, I could have had maybe ten more. But then, where does it stop? You, yeah. you go with your intuition as well. And look at look at what those you know everything you've done thus far. Look at what it's where it's brought you yeah. to. Yeah. Beautiful family, wonderful Emily, and living a really lovely life. So you know, it yeah. all kind of came to this point, didn't it? And if you changed anything, you may not have gotten here. No, that's absolutely right. And I, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> How do you <laughs> feel about that. Junior? Because he's having a he's having a pop career now, isn't he? So. How do you feel about him following Dad? Well, look, the thing is, I always said to him, you know, when we were... Someone told me this, and I'll never forget this, in our generation, and I say that as if I'm an old man, I'm not, but in the generation of us and before, I know that when you used to look at the mountain and you used to look at the prize at the top of the mountain, if someone said, I want that prize, your dad would be like, or mum would be like, well, go on then, yeah. start climbing. And then you'd climb and you'd fall and you'd be like, oh, I've got a sore leg, and they're like, you want the prize, you better get up and go and do it. And eventually, you would get to the top and get the prize. Unfortunately, and it's not the new generation's fault, but because everything's instant, 
they see the prize at the top of the mountain, but they don't always see the mountain. Oh, so they go to grab the prize. And, and I heard this somewhere and I was like, this is brilliant. Mm. So what I've tried to do with Junior um, and with all the kids is instill that you may be given an opportunity, but you have to work damn hard for it. And he does, he's in the studio, he's constantly songwriting. I told him, don't just expect songs to come to you, write them, be a writer, yeah. because then you'll never go, you'll never go hungry. It's almost like having a trade, you know? And so he's a great kid. He's he's really doing well. He's getting gigs after gigs, and <laughs> is he? Well, he's you know he's, be seen you, he's seen wow. you working hard. You know, doing all sorts. And as we said, thirty years in showbiz, yeah. amazing. What are you actually doing to celebrate that? Crying. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny, right? Because I turned fifty at the same time that it was the thirty years, and I kept saying. If we just focus on the 30 number, it sounds so good. <laughs> so we've all... We'll confuse people. No, we'll confuse people. So we're doing lots of things to celebrate. Career-wise, amazing, because we're, I've done this unique little show. Uh, Gary Lloyd, who is the man responsible for Thriller in the West End, we got together and we've created this new type of show that's almost like telling your autobiography, but through soundscape, through music, mm. like a theatre production. Mm. Very simple, but very, very effective. And we've done two already and they've been packed and it was mm. amazing because I thought people are buying a ticket to something they have no idea what yeah. it's mm. about. So we've got three left, we've only put five on. Um, and uh, do you mind me saying the website? that they can go on? Well, no. That, no, but we will put it up on the Loose Women website. <laughs> Does that mean no, I can't say? No. <laughs> Where are you playing next? It's on the website. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sure if you Google Peter Andre's tour, it will come up. It says here, Swan Theatre, High Wycombe. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. He, he put it right That's back, good it? So I just got it back. <laughs> and, and also, also, Thriller, is that what you can ask me or shall I just take over? No, please talk about, just, just, just talk no, about your no. Michael Jackson um, show. Guys, I've had a double espresso. You have to understand, <laughs> I just, I do this, right. What were we talking about? <laughs> Michael, Michael Jackson, right. So Michael Jackson was a huge influence in my life because when I was six years old and we moved to Australia and we had a lot of bullying and we were outcast because of being Greek, uh, it's different now in Australia, but back then it was a really tough time. The only music that made me feel safe, that made me feel happy, was the Off The Wall album yeah. at six years old, 1979. Ouch. And so when Thriller in the West End came about and I got asked to go and be, you know, perform there for two weeks a couple of years ago, I was blown away. In the West End, wow. Now the same people are putting on a production at the Palladium with a full... Yeah. Philharmonic Orchestra. Wow. Can you imagine yeah. all of the Jackson That's classics? Incredible. Amazing. And there are other guests uh, appearing, but they've asked me to headline it, and I'm like, oh. wow. That's a great way to That's a great way to Well, look, I, I tell you what, Peter, you're not going to go anywhere. Can you stay to the end of the programme? Do, Do I look like I want to go anywhere? <laughs> <laughs>